Hello. Hello. Everybody woo tonight? Fantastic. So I know there's a lot of new people, and uh, if you haven't seen me before, I'm sure you're wondering, is she, isn't she? Well, I'm not scared. I'll come out and say it. Yes, I am the illegitimate love child of Johnny Depp. Thank you. Not really, not really. But uh, no, I am a lesbian. Sorry, boys. Uh, I'm also in love with my girlfriend. Sorry, ladies. Aww. Oh, calm down. But, uh, you know, speaking of fear, that's kind of what I wanted to talk a little bit about tonight is uh, fear. Because you have to understand something about me. I don't really feel fear. Like, <laughs> maybe. I'm also not stupid. Anyway. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, yeah, I don't really feel fear that much. I mean, it takes a lot to get me, you know? So there's not just a whole hell of a lot that I'm afraid of, except maybe spiders, but they have eight legs and still have hair and that shit's not natural. So, you know, they get me sometimes. But, you know, I, like, I'm not gonna do something stupid like juggle knives or like jump out of a perfectly good airplane without a parachute is in hopes that I fall on the people from Jersey Shore. So. <laughs> No, I know, they have a lot of hair gel and spray tan and silicone. I'm sure they would cushion the fall, but I'm not gonna try it, you know. But um, a lot of the times people ask me, are you afraid to get on stage? And the simple answer is no, not really. I mean, I've done it since high school, I did it in college, you know, so it's kind of a, it's an old hat for me, you know. It's, I feel pretty comfortable in here. In fact, I'd probably be more nervous going into a Southern Baptist church wearing a t-shirt that says, I did your daughter while waving a rainbow flag and singing, we are family. Like, which, come to think of it, I really want to do now. I'll get back to y'all on that. But, you know, no, no, it's, it's fine up here. I mean, and besides, if you think this is nerve wracking, you should see what you all look like in your underwear. Yeah, except you. You're not wearing underwear. Put that thing away. No, there's a lesbian present. You know we can rip those off with our minds. <laughs> no, that's a myth, maybe. But, you know, uh, and another question people ask is, were you afraid to come out to your parents? No, not really. I mean, they love me, I love them, I know they accept me. So it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, besides, when I was a kid, all the other girls my age were going gaga over the football coach. I'm over here just like, taking sneak peeks of my dad's porno mags and making little flannel shirts for my sister's paper dolls. So it wasn't hard to figure out. So, you know, when I finally came to terms with it and I told them it was on this, you know, trip to Dallas and, you know, I just came out and said it and then immediately called dibs on the girl in the vehicle next to us and the rest is history. So they were okay with it. But um, I found that the thing about fear is it does one of two things. It either keeps us safe or it keeps us from having any fun. Now, the thing about that is like, as a child, I had you know, basic fears. I was kind of afraid of the dark, the closet monster, that stuff. But I think like I was the polar opposite of my sister because she had a lot of fears, but I think her main fear was probably pain because she would stub her toe and we would not hear the end of it for a week. Meanwhile, I would come in from playing outside just covered in scrapes and bruises, you know, just bleeding. And my mom is like, what happened? I'm like, I don't know. You know, because I was a hyper child. You know, so, you know, and she's like, what happened? What is coming out of your chest? I don't know, my patella? I, you know, so that was me. But yeah, I know my mom worries, that's just her. She still worries about me. See, not feeling fear, I do things a lot of people wouldn't normally do. Like, I like to go out late at night. I have been known to go to the gym 11, 12 o'clock at night. I don't really care. But, you know, my mom always gets worried, and I love her, I know she's scared, I'm her baby, but she's like, honey! Well, she's not Jewish, I just love any excuse to do the old Jewish woman voice. She's like, honey, you can't be going out so late, bad things happen to good people, you can't do that! And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's great, and I, I appreciate that she loves me, but I kind of feel like we wouldn't be having this conversation if I wasn't the proud owner of a working vagina. Like, if I was born a boy, we wouldn't have this talk. Which brings me to my next point. Should I or should I not buy a strap on if nothing else but for making comedic purposes? I mean, because so, I've thought about it and like the next time she tells me I don't want you going out so late, I could be like, no, it's okay, I have a dick right now. 
It's fine. It's true. And you know, no, it's cool. I can take it off when I come home, try on dresses. Everybody wins. It's fine. You know, but she's not all that bad. You know, she's not that conservative. In fact, like every year, she hosts this thing that we pretty much like. It's honestly, it's a bunch of bored housewives just storming the beach of Galveston. Is what it is. And it's once a year, and it's a bunch of girls just getting drunk. And I got to go, and like my favorite part. Like, my, my favorite story ever is my first year, I take my best friend, and she's straight, you know, and we've been friends for a long time. Yeah, thank you, Amelia. But again, love, girlfriend, anyway. So I take her, and, you know, we're close. We've been friends for years. You know, we have this really close, but I've seen her naked. You know, we've seen each other naked a lot. Like you do. Like you do. And, you know, so we had to go somewhere really fast, so we had to shower, so we popped in the shower together, right? Unbeknownst to me, my cousins, who knew I was gay but hadn't quite had to deal with it yet because they hadn't seen me in a few years, pretty much surrounded my sister and started asking her all these weird questions, you know, like, is she gay, is she gay, no, no, you know. But then, hands down, my favorite question ever asked, I think in the history of mankind, I don't know which one it was, but one of my cousins looked my sister dead in the eye and goes, so, slapping asses is okay? Like, and the best part about that is my sister's response is, yeah? Like, why, why wouldn't it be? But, like, I, I told y'all all, all of that because, honestly, there, there has been a point where I was kind of iffy about going on stage. And, like, there was this guy and... Yeah, it was 11 years ago. He was my boyfriend. Calm down. It was a long time I was dealing with it. But, you know, it was this guy I was seeing named Tony, and he was brilliant. You know, he was a great guy, and he would always do karaoke on Monday nights, and he would always beg me to sing with him. I was like, no, you know, I did theater in high school, but we rehearsed. You know, this is different. And he's like, no, 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 just do it, just do it. So after months of begging, he finally gets me up on stage, and we sing Fleetwood Mac's The Chain. I don't know if y'all know that, but yeah. Yeah, it's a great song, and it was perfect for us. Because when we broke up, we both decided we like women too much. So, you know. But we, were, we remained friends. You know, we lost contact for a few years. And a few years later, he got in touch with me on Facebook. And he was so proud of me for being in college. Because he always encouraged me to follow my dreams. No matter what, be myself, do what I want to do, and be me. And, you know, he just, even after everything, he loved me so much. And I still loved him. And, it, you know, it was amazing. And so we were talking a lot, and the weirdest thing happened because this one night I get this text, and it says, do you want to know something hilarious? And it was kind of late. I had class and work and rehearsals the next day, so I never responded to it until the following night. And when I responded, you know, he didn't reply, and so I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Well... I found out that he didn't reply because he had passed away the next day. He was a year older than me. And the thing that really haunts me is what the fuck was so funny? Like, <laughs> that was his last text. And like, it bothers me to this day. But you know, I, I'll never really know what that means, but I'd like to think part of it ultimately was this. This is hilarious. Because after everything I've been through, all the bad times and, and everything I did to lead up to this moment, everything that I had to endure, I am still right here, right now, on this stage, talking to you beautiful people, and I ain't scared of nothing. So, let's do a little review of what we've learned tonight. Uh, let's see, lesbians can rip penises off with our mind. Uh, the patella is actually your kneecap, apparently. And the third and most important is no matter how bad life gets, never be afraid to find something to laugh about. So that's my time. Good night, everybody. And thanks for listening. <laughs>